The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to give us a call, our telephone number is one eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five. That is toll free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii at one eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five. My email address is xzone at talkstarradio.com. On MSN Messenger, Talkstar Radio at Hotmail.com, and our websites, www.xzoneradio.com and www.xzonetv.com. My guest this hour is Bill Bean. He is nationally known author and lecturer. He is an experiencer, victim, survivor, and conqueror of evil. As a young boy, his family moved into a small house in Herondale, Maryland. What the family didn't know is that a demonic force already occupied their new home. Bill stated, My family was literally torn apart by an evil force that coexisted among us. The activity began as noises and gradually escalated into violent physical attacks on us by the entities. Now, in his debut book, Dark Force, Bill Bean painfully describes in terrifying detail the events that tormented his family. As disturbing as some of the content in Dark Force, there's a very powerful message of hope and faith that has affected many readers in a positive way. Bill appeared in the Discovery Channel broadcast about his story. The show first aired on September 7, 2006, on the series A Haunting, and an episode titled House of the Dead, and is one of the most frequently replayed segments. As a speaker on the paranormal, Bill has traveled across the country, leaving audiences both riveted and inspired. Now, Bill's website is www.billbean.net. And, Bill, welcome back to the X-Zone. Thank you so much, Rob. It's always a great honor and pleasure to be on with you. And uh, just uh, just always great to talk with you. Thank you, my friend. Bill, how is uh, what are people saying about your book, Dark Forces? Are you getting a lot of positive feedback? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing, brother. It really is. It's such a blessing. I, I and to everybody out there, thank you so much. Uh, I get so many uh, wonderful messages and so much positive feedback, and uh, it's really a blessing, Rob. I believe God has called me to do this, and I, I certainly believe that book is God inspired. And and I think God's plan for me is just to reach out and help as many people as I possibly can. And there are many, many people in need. I get these messages constantly. And it breaks my heart, and I'll do anything I can to help these people in any way. Bill, is evil getting stronger in this world? Uh, certainly is. There's no question about it. Now, in, it's my belief, in my opinion, mm-hmm. that uh, we are in the last days. And I think that if, in fact, we are in the last days before the return of Jesus Christ, then Satan knows his time is short, and it sure seems like things are amping up all around the world, and you see these heinous, evil acts and uh mothers killing their children and uh just when you think you've heard the most bizarre thing uh you'll tune into the news or something the next day and hear something even worse so something is definitely going on here you hear about an 81 year old man who goes to the holocaust memorial and shoots a couple of people absolutely bill you and i have to take a two-minute commercial break please stand by great talking to you bill and uh, congratulations once again on dark force Bill Bean is our special guest this hour, Exxon Nation, www.billbean.net. That's www.billbean.net. If you've never believed in evil or in dark forces, 
over the next hour, you'll change your mind. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon, and we're coming to you live and around the world right here on the Talk Star. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Bill Bean is our special guest. He is the author of Dark Force. His website is www.billbean.net. Bill, how do you, uh, what do you say to a person who comes to you and says, ah, evil, it doesn't exist? Well, uh, what I would say to that person is I am living proof that it does. Unfortunately, I, I call myself Rob a walking miracle man. And uh, the reason I say this is because there is no doubt that God delivered me from a horrific horrific childhood and horrific evil that was uh, perpetuated on us by these dark forces. And uh, unfortunately, some of my family members didn't survive. Mm. And I have no doubt that this evil force contributed to their untimely and and early death. Bill, I was wondering if you could just uh, recap for us uh, and for the new listeners that we've had joined the Exxon since the last time you were on, what dark force is about and, and what circumstances and what evil you've lived through already yeah well the story begins rob uh in 1970 when we moved into this three-bedroom ranch style home and uh like you said in herondale Mm -hmm. uh, part of glen burning maryland and um the home was semi-dilapidated and my father was a master carpenter and he saw it as something that he could fix and restore and and he did he he really did a a great job with making it a, a very inhabitable place and presentable um, but I knew right from the beginning, I was four years old when we moved there, I knew right from the start that something was wrong. I just had fear, um, an awful, fearful feeling, and I shouldn't have had that. And so I knew something was amiss right from the beginning. And uh, it started out as uh, feelings of presence. My mother was the first to have an experience in the house. It was a couple days after we had moved in. It was while she was unpacking boxes. 
she had felt a presence, uh, and she truly thought that it was my father sneaking into the house playing a joke on her. Um, he had taken us, I have a, an older sister and a younger brother, he had taken us to his parents' house for the day to, to leave her alone and let her unpack and organize. And it was during this that she felt this presence, and she thought that he was playing a joke, and she spun around fully anticipating to see him and hoping to startle him first, mm -hmm. and nothing was there. So as you can imagine, she was taken aback by this, uh, startled, frightened. But she was able to collect herself and try to go back to what she was doing, and it wasn't long after that that one of the bedroom doors slammed shut, and that was enough to make her go outside. So that's where it began, and then it gradually escalated into these violent physical attacks on us by these foul, evil entities. Bill, what was the history of the house? Um, what, was there any... Any uh, activity in it before you people moved in? Well, I, I don't know the answer to that, Rob. I do know that um, a friend of mine wrote a book called The Enigma of the Wishing Rock, and uh, he included uh, my story in a chapter there, and he did extensive research on the area, and those homes were built in the 40s, and they were built as military-style uh, housing for uh, soldiers returning from the war and so forth. And... Um, so I don't quite know what the history, particular history of that house was, but what I do know, according to John D. Romine, who wrote that book, um, his research states that uh, there is a structure located two miles south from where that house uh, is, and the structure is called the Wishing Rock, and it's a gigantic boulder-like structure that is placed in the middle of the woods, and it doesn't match with anything else. He says it's like a three-story tall structure like a gigantic boulder-like thing. Mm. And um, he said that several tribes of uh, Indians used to gather and worship at this thing, saying that it had supernatural powers. And um, so if his research is correct, then it's possible. And again, I don't have the definitive answers to this, but it is possible that maybe some sort of gateway or vortex was opened and something came through because after my show aired on September 7, 2006, I was um, bombed with messages from people, especially from that area, telling me what had happened in their homes and, and what was currently happening. So I believe that the entire area is greatly affected by this evil force, and I believe that my family was caught in the middle of this storm because something, after speaking with my mother's siblings uh, and finding some old family photographs that had some bizarre paranormal-looking phenomena in them, I believe the story goes a lot further back. And uh, I've had many tragedies in my family on both sides, but particularly on my mother's side, of uh, very many hardships and untimely deaths and just tragic circumstances. And uh, I believe that something happened a long time ago on her side of the family, be it a curse or something evil manifesting then, but I believe that whatever that negative force was actually led my family to this house where evil was already manifest so i've often said that we were in the middle of this storm uh and attacked from this evil on two fronts and it greatly contributed to the destruction of my family and it has affected many people in the area bill was there any uh paranormal activity in the home you resided in prior to moving to this uh, haunted house not to my knowledge, because again, I was four years old when when I moved in. You know, we moved to the uh, to the Herondale house. So, not to my knowledge back then. But I will tell you this: I found some photographs, and one of the photographs is in dark force. So, if you get the book, you'll see the photograph. Uh, there are two photographs that would indicate that something was going on, uh, particularly with me. Back then, there was a photograph taken of me in 1968. I was two years old. My sister's in the photograph with me. And I'll send you these photographs, Rob. I wish I'd done so beforehand. Uh, my sister is with me in the photograph, and it looks like it's around Christmas time, and we're sitting behind this toy piano. Is that your sister, Patty? Yes. Okay. And to her left, you see this huge, it looks like it's seven feet tall, um, this very tall, huge figure and it appears to be in a black hooded cloak. So that was the first 
indication that something was going on. And then there's another photograph, the photograph that is in Dark Force of me at the age of three years old in 1969, again before moving into the house, that is supposed to be a photograph of me only. And you see these others. That's the only way I can describe it. There are many other different types and different looking types of beings in this photograph all around me. So if, in fact, this is an authentic a uh, supernatural paranormal type photo, uh, then something very, uh, uh, very amazing happened while that photograph was being taken because, as I stated, and, and again, anyone who gets the book or looks through the book, you'll see the photo there, and it's just truly bizarre that here's this little boy, three years old, it should be a photograph of the little boy, and you see all these different types of beings. They're behind me, single file, they're off to my left, they're off to my right, um, one thing looks like a gigantic uh, Indian type of mask or face or something. Then another thing looks like a little alien guy. Uh, it's just several different types of beings, and they look differently in the photograph. Very, very bizarre. Now, your, your sister Patty ran away from home. That's correct. Um, in the A Haunting segment, and I'm very grateful to Discovery Channel and New Dominion Pictures for, for doing my story and for airing it, um, however, there are some inaccuracies in the in the broadcast, and that is one of the inaccuracies. Um, in the haunting segment, they portray it as my parents giving my sister a send off. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. My sister ran away in the middle of the night in 1973 because she couldn't take it anymore. Um, she just felt like she was being constantly followed and watched, and she had been grabbed late in 1970 and uh, didn't want to sleep in a room anymore. And her room was the room we called the back bedroom. And this room, uh, I believe, was the entry point for these demonic entities to come into the home because that room would stay cold year-round. I mean, just even in the summer, hot summer months, and uh, we get pretty hot weather here in Maryland. We, you know, we'll get into the 90s with 90 plus percent humidity, so it gets very, uh, very hot and sticky. Yet this room in particular would stay cold year-round, and the bedroom door would often open and slam by itself for many repetitions, and it would get to the point to where my poor mother would sit at uh, the dining room table and she would just would try and have a peaceful time there, a peaceful moment, and sit there and, and drink a tea or something, and... Uh, there just never seemed to be any peace because when she would attempt to do that, this door would start to open and slam for many repetitions, and she would actually get up and be pushed to the point where she would start cursing at these things. And uh, that's the type of mental strain and abuse we were under, Rob. It was just unbearable. It got to the point to where I think the mental abuse we endured was far greater than any of the physical abuse we endured uh, from these entities. It was just horrible, and it got to the point to where... I say in the book that uh, it was like we were prisoners in a POW camp. We became very desensitized, um, showed very little emotion or feeling for each other. Mm -hmm. It was just uh, we were defeated mentally, spiritually, and physically. How many different entities were there, Bill? I saw five different entities, and four of them, I have no doubt, were evil, sinister entities. Uh, one entity I believe to be an angel. And um, the most amazing thing about that entity is that uh, this, this angelic being looked exactly like my mother, and I wasn't the only one to see her. She helped us on many, of, many occasions, and she helped my mother on many occasions. So I've often said, isn't it amazing that, to see an entity or a being that looks exactly like you? It's just, it must be quite startling. It's just it's startling as it is just to see something like that, but when you see something like that and it looks exactly like you, it's just uh, mind-boggling. Bill, please stand by. We have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Bill Bean is our very special guest, Exxon Nation. His website is www.billbean.net. That's www.billbean.net, and the name of his book is Dark Force. A must-buy, Exxon Nation. It's a true story, and if you don't believe in evil... After reading this book, you will. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with Bill Bean. 
as the Exxon continues live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network from our studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. We'll be back. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Bill Bean is our special guest this hour, Explanation. He is the author of Dark Force. His website, www.billbean.net. That's www.billbean.net. Bill, did these demonic entities ever materialize and if so what did they look like well absolutely they did um it was in 1979 and i was 13 years old and i just had a very very important uh talk with my uncle cliff who lived in florida and uh, a very religious man and it was really a turning point in my life um i had gone there for a visit with my brother and he had a very long talk with me and really instilled the seeds of hope and faith in me. So for the first time in my life, I actually felt empowered. Um, my parents did believe in God, but we had no religious background or structure. I'd never once attended church as a child. And uh, so this was really um, just a, a turning point in my life just to have this talk with him. And I believe God was speaking through him to me. And it wasn't long after that, after I'd returned home, that um, my mother had just been attacked, picked up in the air by an, an unseen force, and thrown through the air across a bedroom and landed into her makeup table, and she was cut open, she was scratched, she was bruised. And also at this point in time, Rob, we had a priest involved, and he was involved for the last 16 months that we lived there. And it got to the point where he was bringing mason jars full of holy water to the house. And after seeing my mother attack like this, which, by the way, she truly suffered more than any other person I've ever seen in my life. She just never got a break. Um, I snapped. And I believe God was working through me at this point in time because I grabbed the Bible, I grabbed the jar of that holy water, and I began to call these entities out in the name of Jesus Christ. And as I began to do this, the house started vibrating and it started like a mini earthquake and things were falling off the walls and flying around and here I am 13 years old engaging in battle with demonic forces Um, five adults were present including my mother they were terrified and no one was speaking except for me and I continued to call these things out in the name of Jesus Christ Uh, doors started opening and slamming and as I continued to do this, they actually manifested at one point several feet in front of me in the living room, and there were four entities, and they manifested in greenish beams of light, and one of the entities had the look of a, the best way to describe it would be like an old-time undertaker, and a very sinister-looking entity, black suit, black beard, black hair, um, very chalky white skin, uh, the eyes were black. Um, a second entity had the look of a male, 
red, uh, short red curly hair, long scar down the side of the face. Again, this chalky white skin, and its eyes were black as well. Uh, third entity had the was a female, had the look of a witch. Very sharp facial features, um, long black gown, long dark hair, very, very sinister looking entity. And then the fourth entity is what I believe to be the ringleader, and that's what I call the Dark Force entity. And when you uh, order my book, Dark Force, you'll see on the cover um, this depiction. You'll see the house and then this depiction kind of engulfing the house. And that is this dark force entity, which uh, appears to be a hooded entity, a black form that has a set of red eyes. And I've engaged in battle with this entity on several occasions over my lifetime. I've had a plethora of experiences in my adulthood since leaving the house. And uh, this, and I'll have, to, have I ever sent you a photograph of that, by the way, Rob? No, you haven't. I will send that to you. Thank you. Um, as soon as our interview is over, I will send it over to you. Uh, I actually captured a photograph of this entity, and I'll tell you, when you look at it, it'll certainly give you chills. And I, I wish these experiences on no one. This is not a cool club to belong to. This is not a neat thing. This is something that is very real, and this is something that is life-altering. And this is why I'm doing what I'm doing now, because it's so very important for me to inform people that this is real. And I also need to inform people that God really delivered me from this. So if he did this for me, he will do it for anyone who will call on him. So this is what my life's work is about now, Rob. And I'll tell you, the sheer amount of things that I have been exposed to in my lifetime is just mind-boggling. If I were to start listing the things that I have seen in my life and I've been exposed to and the things I've done battle with, we would be here for quite a while. Bill, uh, did these demonic uh, entities uh, also mess around with visitors to the house? Or was Absolutely. it strictly just your members, your family? Both. Um, many family members had experiences, um, and also my mother was very ashamed by this, Rob. She didn't want anybody to know about this. Mm -hmm. My mother was a very proud and private woman. Um, it's really amazing that my mom was able to live as long as she did, to be quite honest with you, because she was very ill the entire time we lived in the house. And, again, this goes hand-in-hand hand with demonic uh, infestation and manifestation. Uh, it causes mental and physical illness. And um, I often call it a spiritual virus because what happens is when these demons come through, they go to the weakest person, the weakest emotional person or the spiritual weakest spiritual person, and they work on that person. And then when they get a foothold on that person, it spreads throughout the family, so I call it a spiritual virus, and before you know it, the, your home is in chaos, and nobody knows what's going on and why, and these demonic forces gain in power off of all of these negative emotions, the fears, the concerns, the confusions, the conflict, the chaos, all of it, and it just gains in power from that. So uh, my mom was very ill. She had... Um, high blood pressure, which led to a series of strokes, which ultimately led to kidney failure. And uh, my mother had a very tragic and untimely death at the age of 44. She died from a cerebral hemorrhage. And like I stated earlier, I have no doubt that these uh, demonic forces contributed to her death. But um, in 19, I believe it was 19, late 79 or early 80, it may have been, that I did start telling some friends, and my mother didn't want us to speak about this with anybody, and uh, I did tell some friends about it, and they ended up coming to the house, and uh, they were there. They took this very lighthearted, by the way. They didn't believe me. They uh, absolutely didn't believe me. They were like five and six years older than me, and they thought I was just this crazy kid making up stories, and uh, they humored me. They came down to the house one night. After they, they worked at a a local fast food place, and they all worked together, and they came down after they got off their shift uh, one night, and um, no one was there. My mother was in the hospital, and uh, so it was just the, the kids that came and myself, and uh, 
they were there for about a half hour, and nothing was happening. So now they are getting very, very agitated because they felt like they were taken in by this kid that told them these outlandish stories. And uh, one of the kids began to uh, hurl obscenities at the the spirits and, you know, say things, uh, challenging the, the spirits to come out and play and things like this. Well, it wasn't long after that, after he said those things, that activity did begin in the house. And these kids were scared. One of the kids thought that I had someone else in the house that was, you know, rigging things up and creating noises and things like that. Well, when he discovered that there was no one else in the house but us, he became very, very frightened. And uh, they were ready to leave. Well, one of the kids in the group was a female, and she had to use the bathroom. Now, the way this house was set up, uh, again, three-bedroom ranch-style mm-hmm. home, and you would walk through the front door into the living room, and uh, you would make a right and go down this long hallway. Now, this house, uh, as I mentioned earlier, had this ominous look and feel about it from the outside. Well, Rob, it had the same feel on the inside because the house had this very dark brown paneling, and the house always seemed to be dark, even in the daytime, just horrible negative uh, energy and vibe that, that this house has. And how, you know, long did, how long did you live in that house for? We lived in that house. For ten years, and oh when I Lord. when I was writing the book, I thought to myself, "How on earth did we endure this?" Um, for the first, I'll say the first five years, it we did have we did have attacks during that period, but it wasn't that intense. But it seemed like um, after my father left us in 1975, that's when it really got bad. So for the last five years, from 75 to 80. We really went through hell, and I just, you know, when I started writing the book, it was very difficult for me to write that book, by the way. Just to put myself back in some of those traumatic situations was very, very difficult. And uh, just thinking about it, you know, how in the world did we endure it for that long? But, again, it's like I said, we, we were so spiritually, mentally, and physically beaten down and defeated by these things that we were just, uh, it seemed like everything was kind of like just going with the motions and, you know, matter of fact. And uh, that's that's really how it was. But um, back to the kids, yeah. they, uh, the, the female had to use the restroom. So, mm-hmm. again, as you're entering in, you would make a right down this long, dark hallway to get to the bathroom, and, and the bedrooms were down there as well. And... Uh, I'll never forget it. We joined hands in a chain, and the poor boy that was provoking and challenging these entities happened to be the first one in, in line in this chain. His name was Dallas. And uh, if ever someone could take their words back, I'm sure it would be him. Um, as we started getting near, uh, advanced towards the hallway, we got to the edge of the hallway, just as we had going to the edge of the hallway in this chain, something grabbed Dallas by his throat, an unseen force grabbed him by his throat and slammed him up against this dark paneling, this dark paneled wall in the hallway and lifted him, Rob, lifted him off his feet. He was a good six inches or more off the ground. We all witnessed it. We tried to pull him down off the wall and couldn't. I will never, ever forget those looks of sheer terror on this boy's face. And it seemed like it was going on forever. I'm just probably several seconds that he was held like that. And then this thing let him go. He fell to the floor in a heap. We picked him up, and we ran out of there. And another one of my friends by the name of Bruce was the last one to get out of the house, and he said he looked back, and he saw that dark force entity, the the hooded dark form with the red eyes, glaring at him this is uh, truly amazing and 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 it is true you went through this you lived through it for 10 years yeah y- your, your family was torn apart absolutely you know uh, god bless your mom she would I, I would imagine she got sicker and sicker and sicker as the as time progressed she did rob and i'll tell you she it, it breaks my heart it's really probably the saddest part of the story is the things that she endured and also for my father because my father was a great man 
um, prior to moving into the house, my father was a great man, um, good family man, very hard worker, very skilled individual. He was blessed with the ability to be successful at anything he wanted and a uh, very charismatic individual as well. And uh, his character changed uh, just dramatically. He went from this man that uh, just drew people to him and, and was loved by so many people into this. And I saw him as a hero. And he went and changed into this this uh, person that I felt like I, I hated. I'm sorry to say it. I loathed him. I couldn't even look at him because he started physically abusing my mother uh, on a regular basis from oh, 1973 to 1975 and uh, nearly killed her on several occasions. You know, I received an MSN message from one of our other listeners. His name is Alan. And Alan says, Rob, your guest is right. Demonic forces are real. I have experienced similar en entities as well. Yeah, it's amazing, Rob. I get these messages from people all over the world. I'm up till 4 or 5 a.m. every night answering my emails. I answer every email. So thank you to everyone out there. And uh, for anyone who wants to contact me, you can through my site, billbean.net. And I will answer your email. Stand by, Bill. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Exo Nation, this is a true story. This book would make a welcomed addition to any library. www.billbean.net. The name of the book is Dark Force. Bill and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Bill Bean is my special guest of this hour. He's the author of Dark Force. His website is www.billbean.net. First of all, Bill, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's always great having you on the show. And Alan uh, w asked me to thank you as well for coming on the show and sharing your, with the, your experiences so that people listening who have had these experiences do not have to live their life in fear that people will ridicule them and that there is help. 
Absolutely. And thank you so much, Rob. I really appreciate it. It's always great to be with you, and I hope you'll have me back again. Hey, you know, I, you know I will, friend. You know I will, because this is an important message, Bill. We have to get the message out there that evil does exist. People are being affected all the time. Children, you know, how did it affect you as a child, Bill? Oh, just horrible. I mean, it. it uh, like I said, now prior to my conversation with my Uncle Cliff, um, I was defeated. I was just uh, a really an empty shell. I was just existing, and that's how we lived our lives. And um, when you read the book Dark Force, you'll also see that we endured so many hardships. And again, this goes hand in hand with this demonic infestation that when my father left us, uh, he left us in a bad way. He wasn't sending any money home, and it was horrible. I, you know, I'm ashamed to say that my mother had to go on welfare, and it oh, just it was just a horrible situation in every sense of the word and imagination. Bill, I, I, you know, evil does exist, as you and I both know, and I believe that in these days we have to fight it with every, every, every way that we can, and belief in the positive, the good, in my opinion, Amen. is one way that we, can, that we can fight it, and fight it as a unified force. Amen. And I, I tell you, Rob, I must share what I know to be true. And I have friends of different faiths and beliefs everywhere, and I love people and I can't judge them and I won't. But mm -hmm. for me, I know it to be true that God does exist and God really did deliver me from this, and Jesus Christ is the way. He's the only way. And for those of you, please listen to my words. I'm not trying to beat anybody over the head with the Bible. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I am just stating the truth that Jesus Christ is our Savior, and if we accept him as our Savior, then we can overcome this because we have power and authority by the name of Jesus Christ to take power and authority over these demonic forces, and that's what it's about for me, Rob, is trying to lead people out of this darkness and into the light and give them this information. Well, that's because, my friend, you're carrying the lantern. Well... Praise God for that, and I'll just go wherever God will have me to go, and I'll be used by him however he'll use me, and I pray that I can reach many, many people with this message. Bill, again, thanks very much for joining us, and I truly do look forward to the next time you join us here in the X-Zone. Until Thank then, you, my Rob. friend, take care of yourself and be safe. Thank you. God bless you, Rob. Take care. Good night, my friend. Bill Bean, www.billbean.net. That's www.billbean.net. The name of Bill's book is Dark Force. When I come back from the news at the top of the hour at six and a half minutes past, I'll be joined by Dr. James Lee Sharon in Russia. This is the Exxon live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada.